what should my marketing budget be? How much should I spend on marketing? Well, Eric, I've, we get this question so often that now I have a, a prepared answer that I ask in return, which is <laughs> how much is a house? <laughs> well, mm -hmm. how much is a house depends on, is it a big house? Is there a small house? Does it have a pool? How many rooms does it have? You know, a house isn't a house. It, you know, it can be wildly different depending on what you're looking for. And so when you think about a marketing budget for a practice, First, you got to understand what is this practice about? Is it general? Is it pediatrics? Mm -hmm. Is it a FIFA service practice? Is it a, you know, a Medicaid practice? How well are they doing right now in getting referrals and, and all those things? And so the short answer is I can't tell you how much you should be spending on marketing without understanding the practice and the goals and where is it today you know, and, and how well it's running. Now, we do have a marketing resource that we have on our website, a marketing budget calculator that asks a few questions around their production and their new patients and goals and what kind of practice. <laughs> and it can help give you a ballpark to start a conversation. But again, I can't emphasize enough that it really depends on what all do you have going on. And for example, if you have an in-house person who is visiting referring offices and doing a lot of the social media and, and putting some, some boots on the ground and doing some of the, the lifting there, you can get away with a smaller marketing budget. Similarly, if you are already the biggest practice in the area and you're looking to maintain, you can get away with a smaller marketing budget as opposed to your startup and you have no, not a single patient yet, you don't have any brand recognition, you need to spend some money to create awareness about who you are and mm -hmm. what the mission of your practice is. So that, that, that's so the let me ask you a more specific answer, question. Let's say answer. I'm a, a general practice. Um, I'm doing about, um, you know, a million dollars a year. Um, I'm getting about 20 new patients and I want to get to 30. What do you, what do you tell me? All right. So, so oftentimes what we recommend, and this is a recommendation that's not just from us, but we, we, we partner with the ADCPA and, and they mentioned it as well, a established practice who is trying to grow moderately should be mm -hmm. looking at somewhere between three to 6% of their collections going towards marketing. I think if you're at 20 and you're trying to get to 30, I think, mm -hmm. at, you know, 4% is a good place to start depending on what other expenses you have. Cause that's the other thing, right? That 4% or 3% needs to be the overall marketing budget. You know, it's not 3% on Google ads. It's funny you say that. It's How many times have we Google gone into a practice and they say, we're doing no marketing. And then we find out, you know, there's two, three thousand dollars in in sponsorships and things, and you're like, man, like, how, how's this not marketing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the other funny one that I've had is they want to know if <laughs> their pens that have got the logo or their notepads that have the logo, if that's on the marketing budget. Sure, you know, but I think for me, I, I look at the marketing budget as anything that's going to help drive. Yeah, that's how I would separate it. And, yeah. and grow the business. So your pens and your, mm -hmm. yeah, you're give, if you're giving it to existing patients, that's, that shouldn't come out of your marketing yeah. line. Either. Yeah, it's just goodwill. It's so, something not marketing. I, I would call marketing the intent to acquire new patients. Yes. Yeah. Not, yeah. Cool. Now, yep. what, what do you think are the differences in marketing budget between a PPO driven practice and a fee for service practice? You know, I think a PPO practice, depending on where they are, oftentimes they can be in a more price sensitive area um, where it's more blue color. I think they can lean more heavily on immediate mm -hmm. need, mm -hmm. Google ads, sort of dentist near me kind of campaigns. I think you can do, you know, you can do with Facebook. I think you can get away with a perhaps less than ideal website in terms of look and feel. You can, you, there's more forgiveness there mm -hmm. because a lot of your patients are going to come just yeah, because we, of the we've heard, you have their Yeah, we've heard Suskia plan. talk about but, on a PPO driven practice, the biggest barrier to schedule is, do you take my insurance? Yes or no? Yeah. So, so talking about the insurances they drive is probably more important sometimes than, than the other elements of the website. If that's the biggest barrier to schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, patients are willing to overlook some mm -hmm. of those other things as long as you have some good good reviews because you're nearby and you take their insurance. As where when you're looking at a people service practice, 
you're you're commanding a premium and for that i think you have to deliver an above average product so i think your website needs to have really good content photos and videos i think you need to demonstrate excellence with testimonials and case studies and i think when it comes to the marketing itself i we don't see a lot of success for fever service practices if you're just targeting dentists near me i think the campaigns themselves need to be mm -hmm. around pushing out the video content you've created and, and the messaging and, and the mission of your practice to inspire people to want to pick up the phone and call. It's not just a transaction of, I need a dentist right now and you're here because there's a lot of cheaper options around yeah, here. I think a fee-for-service practice has a higher barrier to demonstrate excellence than a PPO-driven practice does under most circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about a practice that's yeah. trying to add an associate what if 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 they had you know say a three percent budget and then they want to add an associate what what do you think are some of the changes they need to make there to their to their marketing plan or their marketing budget i think they need to increase the budget first of all right because we're now looking at running two parallel campaigns one that's still targeting the original doctor and the brand that existed and a separate campaign highlighting the new the new doctor because when, when there's a new provider in the practice, oftentimes they're bringing in a new set of services. Perhaps they, they have some skills that the original doctor didn't have, whether it be placing their own implants as opposed to referring them out or doing ortho, things of that nature. And if you want to broaden the scope of what you want to target, you need to have more firepower for that. Um, I think one of the recommendations that I give often to clients is if you're finding an associate that, that aligns with your philosophy to create content together, so that you're presenting these two doctors as a unit, how they have similar philosophies and all those things, because otherwise the tendency is the new patients want to see the established doctor because that's who they've heard <laughs> and they don't want to see the, the new associate. And so you have to do double time a little bit, if you will, on providing content and, and generating credibility for the new associate so that you 